finish the bushing. So in doing that, I thought maybe we'd go ahead and take a look at bushings. And we'll start with this bushing right here. And uh, this is a uh, little, little fellow right here. <laughs> Dropped him down the hole. <clears throat> so let's take a look at him. And I don't think I can get much closer without it burning out. I think that's about it. It might be a little blurry. So back up. Alrighty, so uh, bushings come in just about any variety of in quantities, varieties, shapes, styles. You can just about find anything you want if you want to look hard enough for them. Uh, the two two of the main main uh, bushing companies, I guess, would be Bergons and uh, KWMs. I use KWM because my machine's all set for it. So of course I want to stick with those bushings, and they work. You can either buy the actual uh, KWM bushings, or you can buy generics. I buy the generics because they're quite a bit less than cost, and uh, they seem to have all the quality that uh, the KMWs have. So, with that being said, we'll zoom out here just a little bit. And you can see, that here's your clock plates, and uh, this is the uh, gear we're going to be working with today. And uh, over here, these are the cutters, and the cutters are used to uh, ream the holes out, and uh, once you've got the hole reamed out, then you can put the right bushing in. And then from there, you would use what we call a brooch cutter. And these have a five-sided angle on them. And they're designed to uh, expand the hole so when the, the pivot meets the hole that you have the correct size. Uh, you can't always match the, the uh, bushing hole with the pivot. Sometimes you have to polish the pivot down and it requires a smaller hole. Sometimes you can leave it alone and uh, you can put a, uh, a smaller uh, bushing in and then expand uh, the, the uh, bore size out to fit the pivot and uh, so on. So I thought what we do is we'll go through that just a little bit and uh, you'll get an idea of how it works. Now in uh, KW in bushings they have uh, seven different heights so the height would be the from the bottom of the, uh, the base of the, of the bushing to the top and the uh, radius would be the the overall width of the of the bushing and the bore would be the inside hole so when we measured this particular gear we find that we need a uh, 1.2 bushing bore and uh, we're going to use a number three reamer and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, use a uh, 2.72 bushing and the reamer is set to cut at 2.7 so you'll have two tenths of a, of a uh, millimeter wider bushing so that it uh, compresses when you set it inside the uh, plates uh, I also use Loctite on those, and I'll show you a little bit about that, too. So, <clears throat> uh, what I like to use is, depending, uh, most of the, the clocks you get in are, uh, most of them are going to have about a 1.2 or 1 millimeter to, oh, anywhere up to about uh, 3.8 to 4 millimeter uh, pivot up here. So, if I can get away with it, most of my packaged bushings will uh, use a number three reamer and uh, all the way up to almost two millimeters for your pivot. Then after that you got to go to a, a number four reamer and that will take you up to about 2.8 then you have to go to a number 4A then a 5 and uh, so forth. Uh, if you get down below one millimeter, then you're then you're going to have to uh, use a number two reamer. And the difference is is that the, the this dimension here is so small. 
here's number two reamer right here and it's really small so you don't have much grip power when that when that bushing presses into the plate that's why I like to try and use uh, a number three reamer or better for most of my uh, when I set a, a bushing uh, occasionally you have to use a, a smaller bushing and a, and a smaller reamer so anyway these are the, the these are your reamer cutters and I have every size there is all the way up and if there's anything bigger than these then I use a special tapered uh, cutter and I can make the uh, the hole any size I want uh, these are your brooch cutters as I explained and they are five sided and then they have what we call a, uh, a rounded brooch and that's this one here that doesn't have any sides on it and what this brooch is designed to do is to burnish the hole after you've expanded it out with a cutter a brooch cutter and uh, that's one way you can do that you can order a, a series of these rounding brooches <clears throat> what I use a lot of times is these are custom made by me and I use hardened steel it's a uh, it's actually pivot wire steel and what I use it for is uh, I taper these these uh, down so that they fit different series of uh, bushing holes and then I polish those and then when I get done with that I re-harden them to a, a straw color and uh, then I can put these in a flick shaft and uh, I can burnish the hole out Let's see if I can try and show you. We'll put that in there. And you can uh, actually this will burnish the hole and it'll make it very hard, so that your pivot rides smooth inside of there. And uh, I like I said I make oh I have probably five or six different sizes, so I can do just about any bushing that I want. And I uh, use them in a flex shaft, and I can, if the uh, bush is just a smidge tight, I can actually expand it with the uh, polishing burnisher, and or I can use a uh, brooch, a rounded brooch burnisher, which is, is what I showed you here just a little bit ago. This one here. So it's up to the individual how he wants to do it. Uh, I prefer just to make burnishing tools, and then I have a. But it's just faster that way for me. Uh, your cutters, your roach cutters, are used to expand the holes to to the desired uh, opening. So here's how it works. Uh, now, for instance, uh, this one here is a, a 1.2 pivot. So I'm going to use a 1.2 bore, or I could use a 1 uh, 1.0 bore. And then then uh, broach it out to to fit. So it depends how you want to do it. Now, when this this particular bushing is a uh, 2.72 uh, uh, width, and the cutter, the number three reamer, is a uh, two uh, 2.7. So there's all your bushings are going to be about two tenths wider or two thousandths wider than your uh, cutter is. So when you go to insert these they'll compress down just a little bit and then you can just gently uh, roach them out to, to fit your uh, gear and uh, you'll have perfect uh, matched fits all the way through. And I'll show you that how we do that here in a little bit. So I thought maybe you'd like to see that. This is these would be your cutters over here, and you'd pick the right cutter for the for the uh, bushing. Uh, like I said, I, your, for uh, right now I'm I'm plate using a number right here. Reamer. So my plate here is 1.4. So as I mentioned before, your bushings come in seven different sizes. Now I carry. Uh, I carry the uh, three uh, sizes. Uh, I use a 1.4s, and then I go to I think 1.9s, and then I go to 2.7s. Now that would be your heights, and those 
those those three heights pretty much cover everything you're going to need. Uh, 1.4s being the most commonly used, that so I just call them small, medium, and large. And uh, if I run into a snag uh, where I need to lower the height of the of the bushing, I have a couple of tricks that you can do. One, you can put your uh, bushing on a uh, file, a flat file, and make sure that you have the oil cup side down. And you can just run it back and forth carefully, put the even amount of pressure on it. You might have to take it and uh, turn it over and make sure you're, you're coming down even all the way around. And that would be one way to do it. You can actually insert it into the plate and then use a ball burr and reduce the, the overall height. But I don't like doing that because if the ball burr pulls out of the uh, the uh, bushing, it'll it'll tear up your, your plate and mar it forever. And I don't like doing that. It's risky that way. And uh, the uh, way that I normally do it is I use what we call a, these are uh, juuling chucks. And I can put the bushing inside the juuling chuck like that. And on the bottom of the juuling chuck there's a, a screw adjustment. So you can turn the screw down here and raise it or lower it to the desired height you want. Then you put that inside your uh, your lathe arbor or collet, I'm sorry. You put that in your, your collar and then when you tighten your uh, your uh, collet down it tightens down the uh, juuling chuck tube and then that tightens up your, your uh, bushing. And then you can use a uh, graver which is this fellow right here and it's got a carbide graver bit on that. And then you can lay that in your uh, jeweler's lathe or your watchmaker's lathe and you can carefully reduce the size of your bushing. That's the way I do it. Then when I'm done dropping it down I'll leave it in the in the uh, lathe and then I have these oil well cutters. This is just a, a little cutter and I'll, I put it in the oil well and then I turn the lathe back on and I just cut it and put a little bitty uh, I redo the oil well, make sure I have a good oil well inside the bushing. Uh, you can use a ball burr to do that too. Once again, you run the risk of it sliding out of there. I mean, you want to be very careful that you don't hit your, your uh, juuling uh, chucks. You'll cry if you have to replace one of those. And I never have had any problem, so knock on wood. I think that's about it for all of that. And, uh, oh, there is, uh, you can buy, I'm sorry, I called it pivot wire, but I meant bushing wire. And this has got a hole drilled through it. And then you can cut these down to whatever size you need and make your own bushings to uh, fit your plates. Just remember that you want to be about one and a half thousandths wider than the uh, cutter is. And you'll, you'll get along just fine with these too. But these, you, you, you'll have to put an oil well in them and... Uh, make sure that they're perfectly flat on the back side. Never try to file on the back side of your bushing. I don't care what anybody says, make sure that you, uh, if you're going to file it down to make it smaller, and you're going to use a file, use, go on the oil side and work it back, work it down to the right height. Uh, you never want to touch that back because it has to lay dead flat in the plate. So that, that lines every, all your pivots up on your gears. So I think that's about all I can come up with there. So let's take a look here. This was the uh, this was the mainspring I fixed. Now what we did is we pulled the mainspring out, cleaned it, and then uh, we uh, we were broke right at the very edge, right in here, and so that's what was caused the problem. Rather than buy a whole mainspring, I was able to just heat this slightly and then we reformed the uh, mainspring and we cut a new tongue hole in it for the arbor. 
and then we uh, heated it back up and, and cooled it down and, and put it back to this right temper and uh, put it back in and we've checked it a number of times. I've, I don't do that very often but this one was so close to the edge that it, it, it's not going to make any difference in its performance. So we managed to save the mainspring on this and about $40 to the customer. So that's, that's how we did that. So I think I'll go ahead and shut down, set up a, uh, a bushing uh, cutter and uh, we'll, we'll cut one bushing for you so you can see how it's done. I, I think I've done uh, several of them but this one here uh, I thought I'd do it again and then you can kind of go from there. So I think I've covered about everything with bushings. Uh, if you have any questions please give me a jingle on the, on the uh, YouTube and we'll try and answer any questions. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you here in a few minutes when I get ready to uh, put a bushing in.